Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us. Welcome to our latest webinar. And this week, we're going to be looking at uh, drones and Microsoft 365. And you may have seen a webinar earlier on this year, which we will possibly reference as we go through today. So today we're joined by uh, Vince Saunders from Nottinghamshire Police, who is the chief drone team, sorry, the drone team chief pilot. Uh, and who 10 years ago would have ever thought we'd have a chief pilot in policing in the police forces, but there you go, who will be explaining how they've been able to support the frontline operations of both the police and the fire service in Nottinghamshire with their very specialist skills and the use of Microsoft 365. As normal, we want this to be an interactive session. Please drop your questions into the chat. We've already popped a few links in there for you to help you so you can uh, register for further updates. We will bring the questions in over the next half an hour and we aim to get you away at 12.30 at the latest so we can keep these short and snappy so you can watch them again and again. And of course, we will add this recording, recording into the library later on today or first thing tomorrow, which should make it available to everybody through www.transformation.police.uk forward slash watch. And so they'll be online as soon as possible. And just on the webinars for a second, um, they're all available on demand, uh, our very own box sets, if you will. Uh, that are available for forces to share and even embed on their own SharePoint sites, internet sites, if you want to. And last week, as I was uploading the uh, webinar on Evergreen Technology, I noticed we actually had that was the 50th one to be available in the library at the time. We've actually done more than that in terms of our webinars, but we do remove the ones that have become outdated or are replaced by newer versions as we go along. And so it's really great to get your feedback on what you do with the content of these webinars. The, the link is going to be in the chat. It's on the screen now. We do really want to get any feedback you get. And if you've got any subjects you want to cover in the webinars, including if you've got something yourself you want to share with us so we can move that on and share again and others and can learn from it and potentially change the way that they're working as well. So that's enough of me talking at you. Let's start talking to Vince about what's been going on today. Now, part of the reason Vince is with us today is because he's watched one of our previous webinars when we had the input from Thames Valley and uh, Hampshire about how they were using uh, drones and the 365 platform earlier this year. Vince will come on to that, I'm sure, in a second. But uh, Vince, welcome to our webinar and uh, pop you on screen now. Um, could you start off by telling us a little bit about uh, the drone unit in knots and uh, where you're all sitting on this. Yes, yeah, so uh, thank you, David, uh, and welcome everyone. Um, so we went uh, live offering drone support back in January 2020. Um, it, it was a collaboration or is a collaboration, sorry, between police and, and the fire service. Um, we offer 24 seven capability um, with a dedicated resource. I think we're, we're one of very few forces that have that dedicated capability um, and we have 17 officers trained all police officers so we don't have any anyone from the fire service trained to fly at this moment in time um, but that allows us to have uh, a spontaneous resource and a pre-planned resource um, and we can resource them simultaneously uh, we've currently got a fleet of four drones they're all single manufacturer so that being dgi um, and today we've uh, we've done 1,261 deployments. I think that's correct as of this morning, um, and over 588 hours have been flown. Um, our officers work part time on this team, so 50% of the time they're, they're police officers, and then the other 50% of the time, uh, sorry, police officers on response or neighbourhood teams, and then the other 50% of the time, they're dedicated as a drone resource uh, covering the entire county. Um, we started back in uh, obviously January 2020. Um, just going to try and move my slides along. Um, and the plan was to be up fully running with live streaming at Go Live, but we encountered uh, a bit of a problem, um, and that was that we had major um, IT uh, or IS projects at the time, uh, the main one being command and control, the new command and control system coming in. Uh, so that took up major resources within our IT department and it was decided uh, pretty early on that we're going to have to have this as two phases so it got separated so go live drones were, were operational but we weren't able to offer that that live streaming at the time um, 
there were a number of unexpected delays um, obviously the main one being uh, command and control but uh, a number of other issues uh, we went for a tendering process looking at numerous options uh, some of the simpler options looking at what we we're already using in force so um, Cisco Jabber various other things that were already being used for, for making calls etc um, and essentially we chose uh, after a long long period of time a bespoke solution secure solution designed and agreed um, and in March 2021 uh, that was agreed and signed off by uh, chief officer team um, to a cost of £31,000 that was providing us a secure server um, managed off premises um, by a third party uh, it was to a secure or official sensitive secure level um, we had to have uh, external members uh, from that organization vetted to meet security standards etc um, it took a long long time to get us to that point um, from January 2020 to March 21 gives you an idea of how long that took um, and that was just before the end of the financial year we yeah, we signed that off um, and then March the 17th as David's already alluded to um, I was sat here uh, watching uh, Andy Sparshot from Thames Valley Police talking about how they were using uh, Microsoft 365 specifically Microsoft Teams um, to stream uh, drone footage and I was sat watching it thinking well that's almost identical to what we're doing um, yet we already have the infrastructure yet we're going to pay for someone else to provide us that infrastructure um, as a result of that uh, obviously the the, uh, the webinar stopped I immediately sent a couple of emails to our project leads within uh, our IS department our IT department and made them aware of what I've just watched and provide them some information almost immediately from that email um, a capture card was purchased um, allowing us to, uh, to start testing um, I then rang my superintendent um, and to inform him basically there's going to be a further delay potentially if he agrees to it but it's going to save us a significant amount of money um, we'd already experienced quite a bit of pressure um, in relation to streaming a number of departments were wanting it and um, we kept giving delay after delay after delay so it was time sensitive but ultimately we were able to save the force a lot of money so it was agreed we halted that purchase just before the end of the financial year losing £31,000 from, uh, from our budget um, but we successfully completed that trial with the capture cards over Microsoft Teams um, we quickly um, migrated all of our officers on our teams to be early adapters uh, onto 365 uh, so we could start providing that service around the force um, now we have uh, capture cards um, uh, tablets Microsoft Surface tablets in rugged cases um, in both vehicles um, to allow us to uh, stream on the go um, and it's practically costing us nothing um, how does it work um, so we've got a number of um, it utilizes Microsoft Teams meetings we have uh, six meetings preset um, so we're obviously in collaboration with the fire service so um, we have them um, or we have six shall I say six group managers that are, are on our Microsoft tenant so essentially in our network um, and so they can join into the meetings without having to be accepted in or waiting in lobbies um, and then their role is essentially gatekeepers for the fire service to then admit them or other people from their service into the meeting so we don't have an operator flying the drone who's having to quickly check um, the lobby to see who's waiting the issue there is we don't know who those people are whereas the fire service do they're taking that accountability of accepting those people in um, it's fully open to the police service so any member of staff within the police service can go straight into those meetings if needs be if there's a policing purpose um, and it allows us to um, stream simultaneously so we can have uh, for example a football game where we're monitoring crowd movements um, whilst also at the same time running another stream for a firearms warrant or, or something similar uh, it allows us to audit as well so 
with the previous system that was signed off and agreed to audit that would have to put requests into that company to then provide us information as to who's viewing streams at a certain time. This is all managed in force. We can view that at any time. Um, and it's simply a HDMI cable from the, the controllers that we use. As I've already said, they're all DJI products. We use smart controllers, sendance controllers that have HDMI output. So it's a simple case of plugging a HDMI cable into the controller into the capture card which is in Microsoft Teams. We then utilise the camera app um, to reduce the bandwidth and we share that within Microsoft Teams meetings. There is the option to share the capture card as a camera, um, but we use the camera app to reduce the, uh, the bandwidth. Um, and then our meetings are shared, publicised across both organisations. So we just shout up when we're at a job, which channel we're running it on and um, participants log in and, and view that. That's fantastic. So what sort of benefits are you seeing from this? And uh, just whilst I'm quickly asking that, if you have any questions about how to go around this or any particular technical questions or aspects that you want to ask, please pop them into the chat. But in terms of benefits, have you seen in relation to this uh, package? Um, yeah, massive, massive benefits. Um, so one of the, the main ones from my point of view um, was improving safety. So Drones were a new thing in our force. Um, a drone turns up to a job. What does everybody want to do? They want to crowd around your operator to see what they're doing. Now we don't need to do that because they can view it on the mobile phones. They can view it on a tablet that's on a, a long HDMI cable stood away from our operator. So there's no more overcrowding trying to look at a tiny screen. Um, there's no more delay in viewing footage. Um, so you can uh, you can view it remotely. You don't have to wait for that footage to be uploaded. You don't have to wait for someone to tell you what they've seen. Um, another major benefit, so when we're working with our firearms teams, is the amount of comms that are going over those channels. The last thing they want is the drone to be clogging up that critical um, airwave space. Um, by doing this, we're having to rely less on providing those comms because your incident commanders, your firearms officers on the ground can see what we what we would have spoken about previously. Um, anyone can watch in real time, so we've you can watch it on a phone, you can watch it on a laptop, desktop. Um, I was sat at home the other day having my lunch, um, watching a drone deployment at Nottingham Forest. So it, it can be done anywhere, um, and it improves situational awareness. So. You could argue better decisions are going to be made because they're getting better information. Um, and then just to go on, uh, an example talking to our football liaison team um, before where we were putting in a drone where we didn't have streaming, the drone was there to capture the footage. So post investigation, you get an incident between two groups of crowds. We're recording that and then it's being used because we've got people locked up, we're having officers involved in investigations, but now we're streaming it to the silver suite and we're able to prevent that incident from happening in the first place. And that's saving money further down the line in terms of investigations, officers, people being arrested, etc. cetera. Um, you can have unlimited number of viewers. Um, I think on a system that we were getting before, I think it was limited to about 10. Um, and as I've already alluded, simultaneously, uh, simultaneously stream if we wanted to do that on the previous system, we would have had to spend another £10,000 to get another unit to then stream. With this, it's just a case of buying another capture card. Um, so a direct cost saving of £31,000, that was over five years, what we would have been paying. Um, and we're also seeing a, reduce, a reduced need uh, of conventional aircraft, so MPAS. And as a result, we're now putting more aerial support into things into core policing activities that previously you wouldn't have had aerial support for. That's fantastic. So as a question that's come in from Justin uh, about what does the capture card consist of? Is it hardware, software, and is it a requirement or a nice to have? I, I guess it's more of a, a requirement if you're going to use this on 365. Yeah, it, it essentially turns what your what you've got on your controller or, or turns it into a webcam almost. It, it, allows you to share that footage so we've got a hdmi output from the controller and that allows the the computer the tablet to think that you've got a webcam for example and um, so you can share it 
And that's just part of the same functionality on Teams. If you see if you've got a webcam plugged into Teams meeting, you can select to move from one camera to yeah. another. Basically, yeah. it's turning your drone into a web camera, effectively, uh, as simple as that. And then Teams can manage all that. A question I'll have before it comes in is, um, do you how do you record the meeting the the drone footage? Do you still record that in the drone and on the drone side rather than in Teams? Yeah. So as I've already said, we we um, use the camera app to reduce the bandwidth. Um, so in areas of, of of low signal, we still get a decent stream. Um, but you may then have the interference between the drone and the controller, and that will be reflected on the stream. Because we we don't record through Microsoft Teams, we just stream. We record to the SD card, so you don't end up with any lagginess or not that we've experienced it. Um, but you're not going to end up with that interference that potentially might occur. Um, and it's, we record at 1080, 4K, whatever we need to do. So that goes straight onto the SD card. Uh, that's yeah. cool. So perhaps you could talk us through a couple of the case studies that you've got to explain how the, they've been used in, in anger in many ways. Yeah, um, so I could have come up with a load. Um, so one from the fire service, um, this was a recent one, an industrial fire um, uh, uh, where 10 fire appliances were in attendance. They requested the drone uh, for its thermal capabilities. Um, their incident command vehicle, which you can see, uh, was in attendance and we were able to stream to that incident command vehicle. So there were concerns around the spread of fire to neighbouring properties, neighbouring buildings um, and risk of, of hazardous um, or combustible materials within it, uh, such as fuels, paints and cylinders. Um, the drone attended, it was able to provide footage to that uh, to that incident command vehicle where you had the incident commander and various other people stood around viewing it and we were able to give them um, uh, thermal uh, information um, around temperatures, accurate temperature readings of those cylinders and um, the fuels that were inside and give them an, an idea around the structure. Um, and that provided reassurance to them that they were immediately pleased and reassured with um, and they were able to then direct their officer uh, their staff to where they needed to and, and of course the beauty is that you the drone pilot didn't have to be right next to the command and support vehicle then so you could operate in separate areas yeah exactly because obviously you don't the, the space is limited when you're dealing with a scene like that yeah, so that, that's an issue we've had previously before streaming uh, where we had another industrial fire and uh, the pilot, the operator wasn't able to go close to where the incident commander was, etc. because of smoke and inhalation um, from combustible uh, paints and fuels, etc. Um, so they ended up doing flights, landing the drone and then your incident commander or another fire officer would come and view that. So there was always that delay in, in having that real time information and this is preventing that. Yeah, and let's go on to a, another case study if we could for a second, Vince, uh, you know, one more around the crime side uh, that you, you've got to share with us. Yeah, so this was a theft of motor vehicle um, where the drone was requested to carry out a search of an area where the vehicle had been or headed to uh, rough idea of where we thought it had gone to um, so the drone was obviously loads of police resources flooding the area to try and locate this vehicle the drone was there in attendance as well it was able to locate that vehicle um, and this was all being streamed um, early on when we first started introducing streaming to our control room to our incident command vehicles uh, sorry not to our incident command vehicles to our uh, incident commanders within the control room um, and we were able to zoom in to that VRM um, on the vehicle to then confirm that that was the stolen vehicle and its location. We were then uh, able to contain the address by drone um, whilst plans were put in place, uh, intel around the address that it was linked to, the nominals that were linked there. Um, again, all streamed to the control room and it was a quick positive safe result where three arrests were made, a vehicle was returned and further items were, were recovered from inside. It was a, a really good result. 
And of course, you know, the, there's another one that you've told us around in relation to the domestic and firearms instance. And of course, situational awareness for firearms instances is, is absolutely key in the operational environment. The control room, the TAC commander, the ground commander, have all been able to see more is really key to this, isn't it? Yeah, so again, this was uh, one not so many weeks ago. Um, as you mentioned, a, a domestic firearms incident, an ex-partner who had a restraining order breached it by turning up to an address. Um, and I think he either got the, the shotgun out and waved it or there was in, intelligence that he had a shotgun in the rear of, rear of his, his vehicle. Um, so the drone was utilised. We had uh, armed response vehicles in attendance as well, obviously. Empaths were called out, uh, so the police helicopter and dogs were also uh, called into it. There was a, a bit of a, a fail to stop. The vehicle goes off road. Uh, we lost it, um, but it was later located near the, uh, the suspect's address, but abandoned. So an area search takes place. You've got MPAS, you've got drone, both deployed at the same time searching an area. Um, that was negative. Um, MPAS resumed. The drone stayed in the air um, and then located a group of males stood away. Um, and then one male walking off, which matched the description. That information is being relayed to officers on their phones and again to the control room. Um, you've got TAC ads, etc., that are viewing it and then putting information in place and plans in place around where this suspect's going, what information have we got in relation to what he's carrying, if he's carrying anything, and then um, essentially um, the drone led officers to that male and arrested him. Um, it was a really good result. We we got some uh, cracking feedback from all involved that were viewing that stream uh, in relation to ability to give better information and make better decisions. So it was a, an all round good job. I think that's one of the points for, from my side uh, in the experience we've got is that, you know, every single police officer who's had the rollout of their 365 mobile device has the capability of being fed uh, an image so they yeah. know exactly what they're responding to. And similarly, as we roll this out with more and more partners, the, the, the availability of that has to be more flexible for the operation. Yeah. You know, in terms of, you know, you know, the old way we would have been able to have to get to, uh, the officers to pick up kit or have a limited uh, availability of that so we've been able to turn that around again still time to get a couple of questions in but vince one of the questions that sometimes comes up and you did cover this a little bit earlier on the other solution you had to go through quite a, a, a rigmarole around the security of this and the managing that with this you're taking the footage almost hardwiring it straight into the 365 environment which we know of course is secure has that been able to give you more confidence as you move on with this? Yeah, so initially, um, having gone through that process, um, the hurdles that, that we experienced, when the decision was made or when I was thinking about making a decision to say, hold on, stop, we're going to look at something else. My concern was we're going to have to go through all of that again. But I was quickly reassured um, that we wouldn't have to. Um, everything was on the Microsoft tenant. Um, and the security was there. It was software that, it, sorry, it was it was stuff we were already using. We just weren't using it this way. And um, so it was quite straightforward. Um, and, you know, straightforward. It's a simple process um, and saved us a hell of a lot of time and money. So and it does exactly the same thing as what we were going to pay for. So. And of course, it's scalable. The more drones you bring on, the, the cost to add in another controller is just £115 effectively, isn't it? Yeah, or less if you buy a cheaper capture card. Um, so, yeah, um, it really is straightforward, simple um, and the costs are minimal. Yeah, and of course, the point to remember is this is uh, off the shelf technology, so it's chance of his working at a far higher than sometimes if we were getting out of this remote route. Another question, uh, we had a nice comment in here from David Ballot, West Yorkshire. It's refreshing to see the system being used this way, uh, just with a little thinking out of the box via Teams and the capture cards. And imagine the likes of live broadcasts from a court comms perspective or other operational departments are possible. There's a lot more flexibility you now have as a result of this approach? Yeah, um, you know, th thinking uh, about it earlier on, you, you fail to stop. You've got dash cam footage in, in, in your vehicles that are pursuing other vehicles. Could that not be streamed with a capture card over Microsoft Teams? The, the possibilities are endless. It's, it's so simple that 
you know, there's there's a vast amount of things that potentially it could be used for. Yeah, I always think back to my days in local authority camps, CCTV potential. There's yeah. lots of ways. The technology is no longer the problem. It's uh, it's about how we get the right people to the meetings, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. So if there are any more questions, you can pose them as a start to wrap up. But thanks, Vince. That's been ridiculously helpful. And it's so pleasing to see that people are watching the webinars and then able to take action locally. And we really need you to help feed that back to us uh, when you have that case. We know we get lots of viewers on the webinars and uh, we get thousands of views in terms of the replay content as well. So if you ever you do I have used the webinar as a piece of inspiration. If you can fill in the uh, quick survey at times or you've got something to share, the code's on the screen now and the, the short URL can get you to it as well. We do get really good feedback from you, but we want, need almost to be able to evidence what you're doing with these webinars and take them forward so we can move them on and get more and more of these webinars and get the right content to you as we continue with this. Just a little reminder about the upcoming events. Um, last week we held a webinar on evergreen or ever changing technology. And we promised as a part of that we'd do a follow up. We would do, do a workshop with uh, colleagues to be able to get into some real detail. We have a survey that we're running to ask what your challenges are and what questions you'd like to cover in that and obviously encourage you to register that. You can get to the details of that through the Transformation website or the details have been posted in the chat so you can get to that at any time. We do want your involvement in that. We are planning a workshop for comms colleagues about SharePoint as an intranet uh, towards the end of the month. And next week we're going to be hearing from Wiltshire Police and their operations team who've been using 365 to join together the colleagues who have got some very specialist skills with colleagues who are in general policing but might be part of uh, public order training or public order response policing, all those together. So we'll be sharing how Wiltshire have been using that 365 approach to join things together and we'll have the, the links for you to join on those events. The following week we're actually doing a webinar on SharePoint as an intranet with West Yorkshire. We've been doing some real great work in redeveloping their SharePoint site to move that on and to exploit the capabilities that they've got. So do keep an eye on the Transformation website for all the details of those events. Subscribe to our emails and you can get alerted as they're coming along. Thanks again to Vince for bringing together his, his knowledge from today. It's really interesting to see how that's developing. Hope to see you next week again and remember please share these comments on. Let's hear from you what more we could do with this as we carry on. Thanks very much.